Do you know who Emily Van Buren is? One day, Emily Van Buren was weeping at her mother's grave. She was 54 years old, the heiress to an incomprehensible fortune, and at that moment feeling unbearably grievous after the recent death of her mother, when, during a momentary lapse in her fit of tears, she noticed the neighboring grave, or rather, she noticed the two young boys kneeling before the neighboring grave. They were paying a visit to the stone of their mother and father. The dates on the stone indicated they'd both died on the same day. Upon seeing the nine and ten-year-old grieving not one but two parents, Miss Van Buren suddenly gained new perspective on her own tragedy. When she returned home that night, she decided to volunteer at the local animal shelter. As her mother was an animal lover who'd made volunteers Volunteering at the shelter a weekly account. An activity she asked Emily to participate in repeatedly. <laughs> yes, a request Emily repeatedly denied. Uh, so it was in grieving her death that she would finally attempt to connect with that which inspired her mother so. And it was while spreading the newspapers on the kennel floor that she saw a picture that changed her life forever. A picture of the two grieving boys from the cemetery. Yes, and the caption. Orphaned during home invasion. She realized at that point that the animal shelter, while satisfying, wasn't enough. Yeah, so she started the Van Buren Foundation. Which yearly takes in thousands of neglected and abused children from around the world. Through the Van Buren Foundation, she started the Ebenezer Scholarship. Ebenezer being the name of the dog she was setting the papers down for that fateful night at the shelter. <laughs> the Ebenezer Scholarship is geared towards putting kids through college who otherwise wouldn't have the chance. Stephen Stillwater was a recipient of the Ebenezer Scholarship. Yeah, Stephen went to MIT in Cambridge, Massachusetts where he was monumentally instrumental in developing an improved version of the PET scan. With a 45% better success rate of detecting early signs of cancer. Uh, Talibozo was a recipient of one of those scans. Without it, his cancer would have gone undetected until it was too late to save his life. Instead, he went on to lead a revolution. Overthrow a regime run by militant warlords. And restore peace to his country. Yes. Now, shall I go on? So, you're saying I did a good thing? Oh, good Lord heavens, no. You're saying what's done is done. Would be disastrous to undo it. But say the word. No. Obviously not. Everything happens for a reason, Niles. Does anyone ever let you push the button? My wife, Claiborne, you'll have to forgive us. We've just been swamped. Please, have a seat. Uh, darling, it's 24 inches. Uh, please, trust me, 23 won't be enough. He needs the room. It said 22 to third, Osmond. There, there, there. Just, just a teensy bit more, darling. Hmm? So, what can we do for you? Where am I? Oh, that's a bit odd, isn't it? I mean, you were so desperate to come here, and yet you didn't know what here was. Peculiar, yeah? Oh, forgive my husband. He likes to be rhetorical. Dear, perhaps you can tend to Mr. Matthews and let me speak with Derwood. I'm afraid we don't have time for your grand inquisition. Very well. 
Now, Derwood, allow me to weed through my dear husband's circumlocution and bring to light the point he was attempting to have you reach on your own. You do realize the, dare I say, imprudency in so desperately seeking that which you understand so little about. Um, what I do understand is that apparently I could change something in my life, uh, undo a, a regret. Ah, the plot thickens. Mm-hmm. So, it was your encounter with Miss Leah that created this longing, yes? Uh, yeah. And your desire to undo what? It's going to be too high, darling. Why don't you let him rest and get back to the maestro? The maestro can wait. I've almost got this. I'm sorry, you were saying. Nothing. Tragic as it was, you'd made peace with the untimely passing of your parents. So, I'm not sure that's what's truly eating you. And you're not the curious kind, are you? It's not the nagging of the unknown that has you so gutted. So what is it, my dear? Jealousy. I was jealous and envious of seeing everybody go through the door, you know, and, and feeling like I wasn't deserving. Because you weren't deserving, my dear boy. The people you watched pass through the gateway in your home. These are the hopeless. The dejected. The broken-hearted. They've hit bottom. Their lives void of happiness. That's who gets to go through that door. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> Come on, buck up, my good boy. We're here to help you. What, by taking back the day I haven't moved in there? Is that what you'd like? do that. Push the button. If I push it, I never would have written my first book. I mean, Clemente is based on, on Moses. <laughs> Before that, I was trying to become a decathlete. Yes, we know. I mean, my old neighbor was dating my agent. My ex agent now, I guess. But, uh, but I mean, she, she's the whole reason that Clemente was even discovered. Push that button, I never would have met Trudy. Listing the pros and cons is futile. Of course, your life would have been drastically different, in some cases for the better and others not. You could take back your parents' accident, but the drunk driver who hit them went to prison and his infant son no longer suffered his abuse. The spider web of cause and effect is infinite. There's always going to be suffering, and there will always be the opportunity for joy. The question is how we deal with it. Pushing the button isn't going to change that. I can't say you wouldn't have made a fine decathlete. But you like writing books, don't you? So look, if, if if I don't push this, what I go back to my apartment, back to guiding people through. No, I think you fulfilled your obligation as the tenant. But what if I don't want it to be over? We've already found your replacement, Derwood. Hmm. What if he says no? We chose him like we chose you. We wouldn't choose someone who would say no. 
He's going to be fantastic, just like you were. It's time to move on. You'll be happy again, Woody. Let's call this a speed bump. <laughs> <laughs> Now what? Now. It's time for us to get back to work. What do I do? You need to spend more time here before you're ready to go back. Unless the heat's good for you. Use it to finish your book. Mm, man, Rutherford. But then... Oh, my God. Oh, my God, that's perfect. Go write it down. Thank you. We have to go back to work, too. Uh, real quick, excuse me. Um, this thing, uh, this is just kind of out there. Are you guys worried somebody's going to fall on it, or? It's really more of a visual aid. Thanks.